Making a game is hard. I mean, before you even get started, you have to choose an engine, and there's hundreds of those out there. But what if I told you you didn't need an engine, or to download anything at all? What if you could make a game in your... So about a year ago, I got reached out to by a company called Jamango. They are essentially a browser-based game engine. It looks a lot like a mixture of Minecraft and Roblox, but with a bigger emphasis on learning game development. Now at the time, my schedule didn't really work out for me to work with them, but recently they invited me to an event called Jamangoween, where they were launching a massive new update to their interface. So I said yes. All right, <laughs> here's my new game engine. Unity? Nah, Google. <laughs> Let's just... And here it is. And if I'm not wrong, their event has started. So I'll kind of go over the details of the event. As an individual, you get five points for publishing a world, one point for sharing daily in the Discord, and one to 30 points for judging. The game will be judged on design, creativity, world design, and creator logs. Then there's three overall teams. There's Team Aya, Team Icosa, and Team Turts, which I joined because I like their name. <laughs> for the team-based challenges, your team gets five points for uploading five worlds, 10 points for uploading 10 worlds, and three bonus points for the following categories. Most cursed game, scariest jump scare, funniest experience, most addictive, most inventive, best team player, and most impressive build. And yeah, that's the basic event. All right. Future Noah here. Now that that's out of the way, I'll give a brief overview of what I did for the first day. And obviously, most of it was just learning the interface. I started by just loading in a world. I had a few issues with some lag and bugs, but this is an open alpha, so it's not fully finished and they're working on it constantly. And honestly, this was a lot of fun to mess around with. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I've always wanted a staircase of bumpkins. <laughs> <laughs> no, I turned it off. Um, how do I? No. Me, me, me when me when Canvas shuts down and and I can't do any of my classes, so all my homework is late. It's kind of like making a game in Minecraft. You have an inventory of blocks you can select, along with an asset store that's constantly getting new stuff added to it. And once you've placed all your building blocks, you can start messing with props and traits, which is what actually makes it into a game. I think about traits kind of like components in Unity. You need something to fall, you add a rigid body to it. You need it to display text, you add text to it. Traits work pretty similar, and you can also make your own traits and scripts. But I wasn't quite there yet. By the end of the first day, I had learned the basics of the different tools and how to use them, and a little bit about props and traits. And by the end of the day, I had this little demo with moving platforms and checkpoints, and I was pretty happy with it. So day two, I actually had some friends in town, so I wasn't really able to work on the game at all. However, I did come up with a concept for the game I was gonna make. I decided to make an obby, which if you haven't played Roblox, they're essentially just obstacle courses with really short levels that are usually pretty easy to beat. But as you progress, they get harder and harder. Except in my obby, if you fall down, rather than starting over at your level, you end up in a maze. And while you're down there, you're being chased by a monster. If you're able to make it to the end of the maze in time, you get to start at your last checkpoint. But if you get caught, you go back to the beginning. It's pretty simple, but I only had five days and I knew it'd give me a good base for Jamango development. So day three, I knew I had a lot of catching up to do from yesterday. So I decided to start learning Jamango's brand new interface that launched with this big event. Previously, Jamango had a visual based coding system where you'd pull out different blocks and connect them to other blocks to code different scripts. But with this update, they switched to a TypeScript format. And I messed around for a bit until I found the incredibly helpful Jamango Academy on their website. I literally just followed these tutorials for like an hour. And by the end, I had set up my own traits and a basic script to when you fell in the void, you teleport to a new location. However, at this point, I realized a problem. You see, I haven't really played that many obbies. So I did some research. All right, <laughs> let's play Cotton Candy Obby. Okay, this is kind of easy. Okay, all these obbies kind of suck. <laughs> They're all really, really easy. Yeah, I just messed around in Roblox for like half an hour. And that concluded the third day. Day four, it was finally time to get rid of this little demo I had built and make a real map. And this is when Jamango really clicked with me. It really was like building a game in Minecraft. I spent probably one or two hours just building the map, placing blocks, adding obstacles, working with traits and props, and it was really easy and, and a lot of fun. 
And by the end of the day, I took this little demo that I had made and got a good section of a real obby done. Day 5 was, you guessed it, even more building. Except this time, I started work on the maze. And building the maze was really easy. I coded my script so it would teleport me to this random platform in the void. I started by just making a bunch of red lines on the ground. Once I was happy with the general design of the maze, I used the fill tool to make all the walls. It really only took like an hour and a half, but the long part was decorating the maze. I didn't record very much of it because these recordings are already taking up enough space on my computer, but I spent forever putting moss blocks on the wall, little dirt piles to make it, you know, less flat. And then when I was finished with that, at the end of the day, I added a few more levels to the obby. The final day had arrived. For the flash day, I only had until 3 o'clock to work on the game. So, I got to work. In the morning, I started by finishing the obby. By the time it was finished, I got in a total of 26 small levels, which I was pretty proud of for the time I had. Then I had to go to class. And by the time I got back, I only had one hour to finish the game. So first, I finished the full checkpoint system, and then, just to mess around, I had an NPC who would guide you through different parts of the obby, with a little bit of lore dropped in as well. And remember at the start when I was explaining the game, and how in the maze there'd be a monster, and if you got caught by the monster, you'd have to start at the beginning of the obby. I went to implement that, and I saw in my testing that they had this zombie trait that would make an NPC walk towards the player. However, it was... less smart than I thought it would be, and with only half an hour, I did not have enough time to make my own system. So with all that done, I hit submit. I won! <laughs> I really had no expectations on this. In fact, when it was announced in the Discord, I didn't see it until someone DM'd me. And overall, I was really happy with the game I made. I didn't know if it was winning material, but apparently the judges thought so. If you want to play the game, it's completely free and all online on jamango.io. And while you're there, if you're interested, try and make a game of your own. Before I wrap up this video, I just wanted to talk about Jamango a little bit. Now, as you know, this video is sponsored, but this was my genuine experience with Jamango. I really think it is a great place to learn how to make games. As someone who jumped straight into Unity game development, it took a couple of years to really understand basic fundamentals of game development and programming. And I feel like a space like this is a great place to learn fundamentals of programming and coding without having to put so much effort into assets like art and models. I keep saying it, but building the game was like working in Minecraft. Except once you finish building your map, you have an easy interface to code new traits and a whole list of pre-made traits if you're just starting. So if you've always wanted to make a game and enjoy Minecraft, then I really believe this is a good place to start. And once again, a huge shout out to the team at Jamango. And beyond that, just the Jamango community in general. Anytime I had a problem with some script or trait that wasn't working, I'd go to the Discord to ask a question and someone would get back to me within hours. It's really the only reason I was able to get such a big game out in just five days. In terms of the next video, I don't even know why I at this section. Obviously, my schedule fluctuates and when I'll be able to work on stuff isn't very consistent. But as I talked about in my last video, I have a lot of motivation to make games right now. So, we'll see. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Subscribe.